Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Elephant in the Room by Ndovu. Today I'm super excited. We are going to be talking about a topic that we've never spoken about before. It's called Islamic finance. And in the room today, we have somebody who's an expert in Islamic finance. And we will be covering what does it mean? What are the concepts around Islamic finance? What are the challenges, uh, the difficulties around investors being able to access these particular investments and learn a whole lot about this in, in investment space, which actually might be quite relevant to your personal ways of investing. Just because it's Islamic finance doesn't mean it can't be a product that is well suited to you and to your beliefs. So I'm really excited to jump right in. And today I'd like to welcome Sheikh uh, Badur Jafar today and he, I'll let him make his own introduction. Thank you for having me. So my name is uh, Badr Jafar Saleh. Um, with respect to, of course, what we are doing here, um, I am a pra practitioner, you know, in the field and uh, I've been doing this for uh, since around 2005. Long time. Yeah, so, uh, well, let's see uh, what we can discuss and probably uh, help some people. Uh, make the right choices uh, mm -hmm. in their financing or in their investments. Yeah, no, lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me, what, what made you get into this space of, because uh, it's a very narrow niche and a very particular space, what made you go into Islamic finance? Tell um, me about your journey. Um, so when I graduated, I had done Islamic studies. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we were just uh, starting the Islamic banking industry in Kenya. Uh, we, back in 2005, um, we had uh, La Riba, that's Barclays Bank. Yes. They had just started uh, their Islamic uh, banking window. Mm -hmm. And then there was a First Community Bank and uh, Gulf African Bank. Mm -hmm. First Community Bank now is called uh, Premier Bank. Um, so around that time when, you know, they wanted uh, Muslim scholars to come and provide Sharia uh, advisory services, I was approached and I realized that... Uh, I uh, was not really, uh, it was not really my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do a master's in Islamic banking and finance, which I did. And I came back uh, about two years later. And, you know, I've been working in the industry since then. So it was more of um, the need. It's um, what they call in Islamic banking. We always say that uh, Islamic banking is retail pulled. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not pushed by the regulators. Mm -hmm. Rather, people ask for it. So when uh, the industry needed experts in this area and I was approached, I decided to, you know, go and learn and I came back and uh, instead of just being a Sharia supervisory board member, mm -hmm. I was actually asked to work in the banking uh, b bank itself because now I had, you know, some knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, the Islamic uh, theory, but also uh, the finance uh, aspect of it. So, of you know, I became, a, you know, an employee of the bank. No, I mean, that's incredible. The yeah. fact that you decided just after you graduated that you yeah. needed to do two more years to yeah. really study it. Yeah. And, yeah, no, I think it's really nice to yeah. sort of learn something properly before you just get into it. Exactly. But before we get started, I know mm. a lot of our listeners today will be hearing about what the word Sharia compliant Islamic finance yeah. but they don't necessarily know what that means yes so could you give us a summary of what does it mean for an investment to be what are the principles what mm -hmm. does it mean for an investment to be Sharia compliant okay um, a quick five minute education session okay. <laughs> so um, simply put when we say uh, an institution is Sharia compliant is like we would we'd be saying that um, uh, first of all, we say Sharia. Sharia uh, uh, linguistically just means uh, a path. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, technically, the word means um, the law, mm -hmm. and we believe that uh, in Islam, in Islam, this law has been prescribed by God. Mm -hmm. So, when somebody is compliant with that law, you know, we're just saying that yes, he's Sharia compliant that he believes. Or whatever uh, he he believes to be from God, he adheres to it. Mm -hmm. He abides by that. So an institution that claims to be Sharia compliant, then it has codified these laws, and their products are you know running you know in conformity with those laws. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one of the things that people, uh, when you talk about Islamic banking with uh, Sharia compliant banking, is they believe that uh, they know we don't deal in interest. So what is interest? Uh, one of the principles of Islamic finance or Islamic uh, you know, trading. Mm -hmm. uh, this interest or trade or usury is simply 
uh, any pecuniary or non-pecuniary benefit that a lender derives from you know lending or you know uh, giving somebody uh, money mm -hmm. so if i was to give you a thousand shillings today and ask you to pay a thousand and one shilling mm -hmm. that one shilling is interest Correct. it is riba it is prohibited from a sharia point of view and it does not necessarily have to be monetary and that's why i'm saying pecuniary or non-pecuniary yeah. it could be you know um, a service or it could be another benefit let's say if you are going to town and you give me a lift so simply because of that loan that I've given you, and I'm also getting a lift from, you know, this place to or A to B, mm -hmm. that non-pecuniary benefit to me is still deemed to be interest and therefore not Sharia compliant. So one of the uh, foundational uh, principles in Islamic finance is that we do not deal in interest. Mm -hmm. uh, a loan from a Sharia point of view is not a commercial you know, transaction. Correct. It's supposed to be a charitable, just the same way I would maybe come and borrow, let's say, a pen from you. Yes. Uh, you don't expect to get two pens from me. Exactly. Just one pen. So the same way, if I give you a thousand shillings or you give me a thousand shillings, you should only expect a thousand shillings back. If you want uh, a benefit out of it, then it has to be uh, an investment mm -hmm. where you run the risk of getting a profit as well as incurring a loss. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But if I'm only going to give you money and this uh, irrespective of the outcome of the business venture or whatever you're going to do with the, with, with the money, uh, then that is not Sharia compliant. And it is also um, not economically, uh, you know, viable for an institution or even a, govern a government. For example, in Kenya today, uh, one of the things that um, we are grappling with, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about it, that, you know, Kenya is really uh, highly uh, indebted. Yes. Okay. Um, when we borrow from other countries and we pay that uh, money with uh, we, with uh, interest, mm -hmm. if that money has been used to pay salaries, where are we going to get that interest? That interest, the, yeah, return. Even the principal yeah. itself, yes, if it course. has been paid, you know, for consumption. Correct. Yeah. 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 So you, you see that it is not e even economic. Uh, economical to uh, take a debt and repay you know that debt with something extra mm -hmm. and that's why we say from a sharia point of view that uh, a debt is a charitable contract yes. and not a commutative or commercial contract makes sense yeah just taking a step back mm -hmm. the global population in the world 25 percent of them are islamic okay and in Africa, that number stats at 41%. Yeah. And in Kenya, we have 11% of the population that is yeah. Islamic. Mm -hmm. But did you know that there is only 1% of investments globally that are Sharia compliant? Yes. How crazy. It is. Given the population, quarter of the world's population yeah. is needs this, needs this type of investing, and we have not even scratched the surface. Very true. Uh, probably this is, uh, if you look at the banking industry, is more than 500 years old, mm -hmm. you know, the banking industry. So Islamic banking uh, started around 1963, uh, you know, in Egypt, mm -hmm. uh, people trying to do target saving. Uh, that is Sharia compliant to either enable them to go for uh, Hajj or pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, again, as I said, you know, Islamic finance is retail pooled where, you know, the masses are asking if today I was to, uh, to go to a conventional bank and ask, uh, do you provide Sharia compliant products? Mm -hmm. And they say, no, we don't. So now the bank, you know, is pushed to towards, you know, thinking of coming up with uh, Sharia compliant products. So that push is what has led us to, you know, where we are. And that is uh, probably why uh, we have barely scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. Now, on one hand, and then uh, on the other hand, you have uh, skeptics, people mm -hmm. who don't necessarily believe it's like you, you, you have people complaining that uh, how do you have the same banking, uh, you know, industry providing Sharia compliant or maybe an Islamic window yes. within a conventional bank? It, it is not possible. So you have quite an, a, a sizable majority of people out there who don't believe uh, there's something like Islamic banking. It's okay? true. Yeah. Uh, and that's why people would continue, you know, uh, patronizing, if you like, you know, uh, non-Sharia compliant uh, products, you know, within the banking industry. Mm -hmm. 
So th- 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 there is that pull. And of course, people who are very conscious of their religion, they still want to, you know, take facilities from banks and ensure that these facilities are Sharia compliant. Of course. Yeah. So th- 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 there is that, you know, push and pull uh, mm-hmm. within the market. And even in Kenya today, and I remember um, just before we launched uh, Takaful, which is Islamic insurance, yes. uh, we did a survey and uh, we were now even talking to uh, Christians. Mm-hmm. And we had, uh, you know, some funny uh, comments like somebody saying, I don't believe in insurance. Me, my life is, uh, um, I think the word they used was um, secured or protected by the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So you have, again here, uh, people who are religious and they do not necessarily believe in a certain product. So in this case, uh, insurance. Yes. Uh, so, yes, there are also Muslims who do not believe in insurance or they don't believe in this so-called, according to them, so-called Sharia compliant products. Yes. So th- that hesitance and, you know, that uh, skepticism, uh, that um, uh, disbelief in, uh, let's say, the, 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 the regulator today, um, the regulator does not supervise uh, Sharia compliance. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. They just give a license uh, for Islamic banks to do their thing. But they don't necessarily. But they don't supervise. They do the not monitor and supervise that is it indeed Sharia compliant because they do not have that expertise. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's really interesting? There's a couple of things you mentioned there. So yeah. I definitely want to talk about how Sharia compliant is also suitable for Christians mm-hmm. uh, because the principles and the beliefs are quite si- are similar. So we'll come mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. But also. Even globally, do you feel that that, so when I say talk about the regulators, do you feel globally Mm -hmm. now the regulators have the expertise in-house to monitor Sharia compliant banking or or you still believe that there's gaps in the market there as well? Uh, Well, there are some jurisdictions like, uh, let's say, Malaysia, Mm -hmm. where uh, the Central Bank of Malaysia, yes, it does uh, supervise uh, Sharia compliance. Mm -hmm. You have the GCC countries Mm -hmm. uh, where they also supervise Sharia compliance. Uh, And then you have places like Pakistan or even Iran, you Mm -hmm. know, they do uh, supervise that. So um, a few regulators have that expertise. But we also have institutions like the IFSB, Islamic Financial Services Board, that uh, that provides standards for regulators to regulate Sharia compliance. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in in terms of um, bridging that gap, there are institutions that are actually working towards that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, CBK in Kenya, the Central Bank of Kenya, is actually a member of the IFSB, the Islamic Financial Services Board. Uh, However, uh, probably because uh, they have not uh, taken that initiative, uh, to just now ensure that they also not only just provide uh, the licensing, yeah. they also now you know monitor and supervise Sharia compliance. It's just sort of like a plug and play for mm-hmm. them to you know work with the IFSB, the AOFI Accounting and uh, Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions. Mm-hmm. So it's something that can uh, be done. Uh, probably uh, we have not reached there, but it's something that can be done. Yeah, and maybe yeah. it's coming. And and yeah. would you say that uh, right now the CBK offer, offers infrastructure bonds, treasury bills, but they are not Sharia compliant from my understanding. That's correct, right? Yeah, currently, yes. Say if I was a business owner and I wanted to come take a loan Mm -hmm. uh, or debt, how is it defined? What does the product look like? Um, Let me me just take a step back and say, for example, you had asked, uh, uh, if I was not a Muslim, why would I want to take a facility, we call them facilities from an Islamic bank, Mm -hmm. uh, simply because if today you came to an Islamic bank, and remember, uh, Islamic law is uh, divided into two. We have, you know, that spiritual aspect. So an Islamic bank is not a mosque. Correct. It's not a mosque. Yes. An Islamic bank is, you know, a business. Correct. So I will serve anybody who comes to me, whether they believe in God or they don't believe in God. Makes sense, Okay. Yeah. And therefore, uh, there is no... Um, we do not differentiate. We would not uh, discriminate and say, no, we only serve Muslims. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We will serve anybody who, you know, is keen to do business, you know, within the Sharia, uh, the conf- confines of Sharia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if today you came to an Islamic bank, the standard question I usually tell people, it would be, why do you want the money? If you came to us, yeah. you tell me you want a million shillings. My question would be to you, For why? 
Yeah. Why? What are you going to do with it? What, yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if you you say you wanted an asset, mm -hmm. okay, uh, let's say you are a transporter, mm -hmm. you need uh, to buy um, a truck to ferry, you know, fuel from Mombasa to Nairobi, for example. Mm -hmm. So, how an Islamic bank would work um, is that an Islamic bank would buy that truck. For and you? yeah, not necessarily buy it for you, buy it for themselves. Okay. Yeah? yeah. And then sell it to you. So the relationship here would be that the Islamic bank has bought a truck, mm -hmm. let's say at a million shillings, and sold it to you at let's say 1.2 million. So this is how we make our money. And it's what a profit. we yeah, what we make here is a profit mm -hmm. and not interest. Understood. And therefore, if we wanted to differentiate between profit and interest, any um markup or any return that is generated from a loan. Mm. Let's take a very simple example. Uh, we have the Hustler Fund. Yes. And the Hustler Fund works like this. So you have a mama mboga out there. Mm -hmm. She borrows in the morning, let's say, 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, she pays, let's say, 5,500. Yes. Okay. Now, to the Hustler Fund, that 500 shillings that they have made out of mama mboga is definitely interest. 100%. Because they have lent to her 5,000 and they have received from her 5,500 in the evening. Mm -hmm. But what about Mama Mboga? She has gone to the market, she has bought goods, let's say tomatoes, potatoes or whatever, yes. and she has sold in the evening. In the evening she has, let's say, 7,000. Yes. What would you categorize this 2,000 on top of the 5,000? Would That's it be fine. interest? No, it's profit. It cannot be interest. Yes. It would be profit because she has traded. Correct. So this is the way we differentiate between profit and interest. That an Islamic bank is a trader. Mm. And the principles that we talk about are, uh, uh, in terms of uh, Islamic banking, you know, uh, products and services, yeah. is that the relationship between an, between an Islamic bank and its customers would either be a buyer-seller, or, or a lessor lessee, mm -hmm. you know, a tenant, landlord tenant uh, yes. relationship, yeah. or a principal agent relationship, or a, an inv uh, or a partnership. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. So, th whatever we make out of these uh, transactions or investments, then definitely these are profits. And this is what we would also share with our depositors. So, mm -hmm. when you open an account in an Islamic bank, mm -hmm. you ideally are investing with that bank. So, you become a partner with that bank. Yes. And what we are going to do, we are going to deploy these funds into, uh, let's say, the asset financing mm -hmm. or working capital. Um, and whatever we make, then we will share with our uh, depositors. So the deposits are uh, uh, differentiated in terms of it could be, uh, let's say, a savings account. Ideally, it's an investor-investee relationship okay. where the customer, the depositor has given us money to invest. Um, not necessarily on their behalf, but, you know, as a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a current account, ideally, it's just um, a service that we're providing to the to the customer, and they're not going to earn anything out of it. Yes. If anything, the customer will pay us for the services that we render to this customer. Yes. So generally, you know, I hope uh, that answers uh, your question. No, it's great because yeah. um, I know a lot of the listeners here mm. don't really quite... It's nice to put examples, and mm -hmm. what I've taken away in, in summary is that uh, working with Islamic Bank, the way you, it's a Bishara, you're doing business. Yes. So it's not that you're borrowing, they're not a lender, it's very much that they make you a partner, yes. and as a result of that, from the profits that they earn is what you get. Yes. Uh, so what you get in your savings account is a profit, yes. because you're a partner of the business. Yes. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have customers that ask us yes. uh, that this fund, they're a bit skeptic about the fund itself. They're like, how can it be Sharia compliant? Mm -hmm. I know the answer, but I'd love to hear from your okay. point of view, mm -hmm. how they how do they manage to do that? How can Apple be have a share class that's non-Sharia compliant, but also mm -hmm. Sharia compliant? And okay. how does that work? Uh, let's take a simple example of, let's say, a company that is worth 100 shillings, okay. to make it very simple. Yeah. Now, this company, if all of its assets, if you're talking of 100 shillings, of all of its assets are, you know, tangible assets, maybe plants and machinery, mm -hmm. then it's very Sharia compliant or very uh, straightforward mm -hmm. because you will be looking at the core business of the company, mm -hmm. number one, and then we'll be looking at um, uh, some screens that uh, one, is it um, leveraged, yes. has it borrowed, 
uh, would also be looking at uh, I- liquid assets mm-hmm. because w- buying money you know for money is not sharia compliant you cannot buy money no. okay money is supposed to be a medium of exchange mm-hmm. and therefore when we look at that 100 shillings I- is there a component that is corresponding to you know debt or liquid uh, assets like you know just cash mm-hmm. If the bigger chunk of this company, out of these 100 shillings, let's say most of it, 70% of it is uh, assets, then we would say that buying that share would be Sharia compliant. But if the bigger chunk is a debt, then it would not be Sharia compliant. Because what you're buying, in in, in essence, you're buying a debt. Mm -hmm. And buying a debt from a Sharia point of view it's supposed to be at par value. If the debt is a hundred, you just buy it at at a hundred. Yes. Not even discounted. Yes. Yeah, you sense. understand. Yeah. So the way we would be looking at uh, you know this kind of companies, whether Apple or Google, is that um, the the assets have to be you know tangible assets. Mm-hmm. Uh, mo- mo- most of them, you know, uh, above sixty uh, percent or seventy percent, mm-hmm. would also be looking at um, the leverage ratio. It has to be uh, less than thirty percent. Mm-hmm. If they are invested in anything that is not Sharia compliant, then it, it has to be less than five percent. Mm-hmm. Met with Wahid, the investment manager. Mm-hmm. I had to learn a little bit about how can companies like Google, Apple, who have maybe some interests in defense or weapons, not that they do, but mm-hmm. there's some sh- uh, or some high debt products that they're making a lot of interest on. Yes. And yeah, the way you said it is um, exactly the same. So they set up a, a clear another share class where when they uh-huh. borrow money or yeah. when they take money from investors, mm-hmm. they um, deploy it to certain areas of the business that uh-huh. are all Sharia compliant. Yes. And there's a board and, a, and, and, a, and the regulator actually help govern yeah. and monitor that to make sure that this fund itself is Sharia compliant. Yes. And what's really interesting about this um, particular fund and we'll, mm-hmm. is that it allows the Islamic community to actually start being involved and start earning yeah. and making profits from, you know, holding companies that we all consume. So you've got an iPad there. Yeah. Um, you know, we all use Google for Gmail, yeah. et cetera. So now mm-hmm. the world is opening up to bringing in more um, it, more products to the Islamic community and doing it in the right way that yeah. sort of sits well with your beliefs. And and, yeah. and so it's great. And actually last year, um, if you had held the uh, Halal Fund is what we call it on the platform, mm-hmm. um, from the 1st of January till the end of January, mm-hmm. you would have earned 30% on the dollar in profit. Oh, great. And actually it comes down to, we say, okay, well, we have a Sharia compliant fund. Yeah. And what's lovely about this is that it's actually designed for the Islamic faith, but actually it meets the needs of our Christian um, brothers and sisters, if you could say. Yeah. And what are your views on that? Um, I think the most important thing for any investor out there is what is the value proposition for me? Exactly. Okay. Um, the added advantage would be uh, that, for example, you you do not go uh, financing uh, companies that are going to employ underage children. For example, that you hear, uh, I don't I, know whether, I, whether you're Christian yeah. or Islam. Exactly. Or it doesn't, doesn't matter. Really matter. It's yeah, a it human. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So um, once I I am sure that yes, I'm going to get let's say thirty percent, as mm-hmm. you mentioned. Uh, now I would also want to know. You know, is it ethical? Mm -hmm. Because Islamic finance is also ethical. Mm -hmm. uh, And therefore, when we talk about ethics, it's not necessarily Islamic ethics, Christian ethics. It's just ethics. ethics. You know, if it is something that uh, does not help the society. And one of the things that I usually tell people is that uh, Islamic finance and the principles of Islamic finance, they they starve, uh, you know, some... Uh, bad elements, you know, from the society. So if it is, if it is an industry that is injurious or is, it's harmful to the society, then we enter industry. So, for example, tobacco or liquor, we would not finance them. And therefore, yeah. we are doing, uh, you know, something good for the society. Uh, and therefore, we all want to have a society where if I am raising my children, they will not be exposed to these pubs that we see, you know, mm. in the neighborhood, for example. Yes. Uh, and therefore, it is something that is, you know, o- over and above me getting money out mm. of this, you know, the profit that I'm making out of it, uh, the income, that, yes, what am I doing for this society? And then we also have these sustainable, you know, uh, goals, for example. Yes the green economy Mm -hmm. uh are we going to finance today we're talking for example about uh you know the coal and you know the effect of uh, carbon and all that um 
this this is something that we are keen on because we are also going to save, save uh, the environment. Yes. We are going to ensure that our children and grandchildren are going to be in an environment that you know uh, is, is is you know good for them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we talk about uh, that value proposition, should not it, it should transcend the money that I'm making. Mm -hmm. And therefore, looking at my grandchildren, and therefore, uh, I say it is good for the whole society. Um, when we, we, we talk about uh, Sharia, we say this uh, Islamic uh, law, and Islamic law is there to ensure um, uh, we safeguard the interest of the counterparties. Mm -hmm. So if I am safeguarding my own interest as, you know, as a trader or, you know, a party to a contract, and I'm also ensuring, you know, I'm also going to take care of your own interest, irrespective of whether you are a Christian a Hindu, mm. a Jew, mm. or you don't even believe in God. Yes. I'm still looking at your own interest. Yeah. So there's that v value proposition. Yeah. We are about humanity. We are looking at you know, my own interest, and I'm also ensuring that uh, your own interests are also taken care of. I think that's really beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and, it is. and you yeah. do need keepers of the yeah. you know, universe. So I yeah. think that's really beautiful. Yeah. So there is a misconception mm -hmm. that if you were to, respons uh, to invest responsibly, Yes. So, you know, there's a lot of um, ESG, so environmental social governance uh, type fund, uh, funds that are out there, or investments. Yeah. There's a lot of misconception that they that people believe they won't be able to make the same amount of profit or interest or return from those types of investments. What are your thoughts there? Remember, we said um, Islamic banking, it's a partnership mm -hmm. and it's, you know, commercial. It is for profit. So when I enter into any transaction, I want to make money out of it. Correct. Okay. It's business. Uh, yeah, it is business. It's not a charity. Mm. If I want a charity, I would go to the mosque or mm. any, you know, religious, um, you know, uh, institution, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. An Islamic bank is Islamic, but it is Islamic um, uh, in as much as, you know, it wants to do its business in a Sharia compliant way. Mm -hmm. But now if I am asked uh, whether I'm going to make 10% or 15% or 30%, I want to make 30%. I even really want to make 50%. Yes. If I'm able to make 50%, why not? Yeah, so basically, uh, the, the Sharia does not limit us in, in terms of, you know, that profit margin. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't. So tell me, in this market, mm -hmm. what do you think are the uh, challenges or so what are the challenges with having more Sharia compliant investments available and what are banks or fintechs doing to encourage more uh, Sharia compliant investments uh, so the public can get more involved? Mm -hmm. And where do you see this going with time? The challenge that we have in Islamic finance today uh, you know, is endemic, you know, whether it is in Kenya or Malaysia or wherever. Mm -hmm. I said one of the things is that skepticism, yes. uh, that people don't really believe it is Sharia compliant or uh, a good number don't believe it is Sharia compliant. But the bigger challenge is in terms of that dearth of knowledge. We do not have, uh, whether it is the regulator or the practitioners mm -hmm. and then those who patronize these uh, products and services. Uh, they don't have that understanding of uh, what is Sharia compliant. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you might have some misconceptions that Islamic banking is supposed to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a lot about the lack of availability of Sharia compliant products in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, what are traditional banks, um, existing partners in the market and fintechs doing in this space to enable more of the youth and, you know, the, the Islamic, yeah, the Islamic youth mm -hmm. to actually invest in and grow their wealth? Uh, so generally what we have in Kenya uh, currently um, is, uh, I don't know whether to just call them the vanilla products, you know, uh, just the basic products. Yeah. So whether it is asset finance, working capital, uh, finance, uh, personal finance, you know, this kind of uh, products that are, you know, generic, you know, uh, vanilla uh, products. But um, going into FinTech, as I said, uh, we expect to see that market grow mm -hmm. simply because of the demographics, mm -hmm. you know, within the population. In terms of investments, uh, cryptocurrencies, these are things that, uh, you know, we get uh, enough questions about whether they are Sharia compliant. Are they Sharia compliant? <sighs> the jury is still out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We, ha we, ha we have uh, scholars who have actually said they are not Sharia compliant. We have some who have said they are Sharia compliant. But those who say they are not Sharia compliant, they have only said they are not Sharia compliant because of a number of things. One of them, a key, is 
um, because of the risk profile, yes. uh, because they are not um, issued by, you know, banks uh, yeah. or other uh, countries, yes. you know, the, the central banks. What Islamic banks uh, are doing currently, as I said, just vanilla product, but we see there's, uh, uh, you know, great potential in this area of fintech, mm -hmm. espe especially Islamic finance. Uh, one of the areas that uh, <clears throat> we're starting to see, uh, you know, maybe uh, an uptake or interest is even in terms of Sharia compliance itself, okay. i.e. in terms of advisory Sharia compliance. So if today I'm able to go to AI and ask you know, is this Sharia compliant? Yeah. This is actually an area of interest right now, and especially for me being, uh, you know, a, a Sharia advisor mm -hmm. and auditor, that uh, probably uh, in a few years we might have a Sharia function within uh, an Islamic financial institution mm -hmm. that it, not, it is not necessarily manned by human beings, but, but AI. by AI. That's you know, actually really yeah, cool, yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything on the market that we should know that's coming? Anything exciting you've seen? There is a lot of talk from, you know, both uh, the regulator and the practitioners about Sukuk. So yes. this is something that we expect to see probably uh, in the near future mm -hmm. uh, where there will be sovereign Sukuks mm -hmm. and probably a number of, uh, you know, corporate Sukuks. Yeah. So this is something that we actually uh, expect to see very soon. One of the um, dreams that I had uh, when we promulgated the constitution, I think way back in 2010, and... Um, uh, devolution, you know, yes. uh, of the government. Uh, I had expected to see in the uh, Muslim majority areas to actually have a lot of sukuk from these, you know, counties. Yes. Uh, it's very unfortunate that, uh, let's say, we have um, Garissa or Mandera or Ajia or whatever, but they have not been keen on coming up with uh, maybe sukuks to fund, uh, you know, projects, you know, in the areas. Yeah. But this is something that, you know, is a low hanging fruit that, mm -hmm. you know, we can easily uh, draw and, you know, come up with a sukuk and, uh, you know, uh, develop these counties. So this has been a very exciting uh, episode. I've learned so much. Um, I've definitely been enlightened on ethical investing, ESG investing, Sharia compliant investing. Um, are there any parting thoughts you'd like to leave us and the audience with? We say one of the biggest challenges in Islamic banking or Islamic finance is uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. that knowledge gap. If today the customer is enlightened, they know their products, they know uh, the Sharia compliant uh, products, then it would um, help in terms of um, even improving the banking industry itself. Mm -hmm. uh, take a simple example. If today I was to walk into a bank and they're providing me with a product that they claim is Sharia compliant mm -hmm. and I'm able to push back and tell them, okay, this is not Sharia compliant because of A, B, C, D. You know, that is where I would, uh, you know, hope to see uh, this market, you know, go to where um, uh, the practitioner, as i.e. the institution, the bank, mm -hmm. and even the regulator, you know, is Sharia compliant simply because the customer, you know, is enlightened. They know uh, their rights, they know their obligations, and they know their products. No, and exactly. And this is why it's so important to have conversations like this. Yeah. We're educating, you know, people who are not even um, of the Islamic faith, but just ethical investors on how to look for ethical investments. Yeah. Um, and the importance of investing. Um, you know, I wish when I was 20... One, I knew the importance of investing. I learned it much later um, at the age of 28. But, you know, if I'd started earlier, we would be financially more independent, which means that we can go to doing the things that we love and believe in without the financial pressures of, you know, trying to put food on the table. Mm -hmm. But today was a bit lovely. It was so such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you. And I, yeah, we should have a conversation offline. Maybe we can launch a sukuk together. You never yeah. know. Who knows? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you.